everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. You know, these people are openly saying that they view us as a direct threat to their structure. And the reason why they view us as a direct threat to their power structure is because we are the only people that should not want to be a part of it. They welcome everybody else on some level. Even on a level of kissing their feet. They openly welcome everybody else. We are the only people that, that do everything we can to force ourselves into their world. This is why when you get blacks that hang mainly around white folks or blacks that vote a certain way, this is why their language and tone becomes extremely anti-black because they are forcing themselves into a space where they don't, they're not even wanted. And the crazy thing is we support them. It's us. We support them. Them folks don't support them. We support them. Them folks use them, but they're not really supported, supported by anybody. We support them. It was us that brought Candace Owens back into the fold after she spent all those years talking crazy about us. See, if I was in control of stuff like that, she would never be invited to anything concerning us as a people. Never. Her being of a certain skin complexion doesn't make her my friend. But y'all know that. You see, every move y'all make, y'all hide it behind the pretense of being concerned with black people in general. When the truth of the matter is, you're not really concerned with black people in general. The truth of the matter is, nothing you do is actually beneficial to black people. Nothing you engage in is beneficial to black people. Nothing you believe even comes from black people. Pro-blackness is not even created by black people. It's a creation of white uh, academics and, and sellouts and black sellouts. Black sellouts and white academics. Nothing you do is pro-black. And I come tell you that, man, you know, really and truly, I'm not even on that race stuff. I don't move based on none of that. What I do is I look at the reality of the of the environment that I'm in. I feel the energy, whether or not it's hostile towards me or not. I, 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 take, I take the temperature of what's around me, of the people around me, and I decide based on these things whether or not these are people I want to be around, whether this is something I want to engage in or participate in. This is how I move, and this is why I move so differently. Y'all justify everything y'all do by convincing yourself that things are not what they actually are. You are in a constant state of delusion and this is what the movie Get Out was really all about. That sunken place that y'all are in. The sunken place is this mental place that we are in where we attempt to justify all of our ill-conceived actions under the guise of being pro-black or trying to, trying to look out for what's best for black people. When the truth of the matter is if we cared about black people in general, man, we would pull out of this system tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, if we really gave a damn about what's best for black people, we would be, um, all of us unanimously will be petitioning tomorrow to separate from this country and create our own enclaves within this nation. That's what we would do tomorrow morning. But the truth of the matter is you probably couldn't get, you probably couldn't get a cool thousand of us in this whole country to be down for something like that. What? And that's sad. We complain about police, police brutality and all this stuff. But we don't want out of the system. See, but we want we we want these people to change the way they deal with us. And they're not. That's a fact also. That's not my opinion. That's not a belief. That's a fact. But at the same time, y'all the ones that sit there and y'all talk about all white folks. Y'all get on this Dr. Umar Johnson type tip and talk about all white folks. But at the same time, what has Dr. Umar Johnson suggested that we do that's actually different 
from what white folks do. All he wants to do is recreate the whole structure of this white supremacist society. He wants to create a mini version of it among black people, where people like him gonna be our gods. He already think he own you. He already think he can tell you who you can date and who you can't date. He already, he already think he can tell you what you should believe and not believe. So let me ask you this. If this society is so hostile towards you and you from Africa and everything's so much better in Africa, why not just leave? Uh -uh. This environment causes stress on black people. We have more mental breakdowns than, than ever before. We have more mental illness than ever before. We have more serial and spree uh, shooters and all this kind of stuff than ever before. We are snapping out at alarming rates, doing all kinds of uncharacteristic things because of the pressure, the constant stress that we have on us by being in this system. So if you really believe you was from Africa, why are you not gone? Because that will be the best thing for you to do. The truth is you don't want to go. You What you want is for them to treat you differently. So you constantly look for ways to get them to accept you. I seen the African playing an old clip of Sister Soldier, man, way back in the G, right? When she was on the Donahue show. Anger is on the what? But here come a chick that come out of college with a degree in American history and a degree in Africana studies. What kind of mess is that? And she's angry as hell at white folks. And as soon as she got on, got her a little money or whatever, got her a little popularity, she started writing novels and you ain't seen no more activism from her. All of a sudden, she's not angry no more because she's a little more comfortable where she's at in life. Now, when white folks see her and recognize that they ask for autographs and pat her on the back, so she feels a little bit better now. She, as the individual, made it, so she don't care about the rest of us no more. She's in a better place within this system. I don't resonate with y'all, man, because we just different types of people. What y'all want and what I want from society is two different things. And this is why I move the way I move. I know what this means. And because I know what this means, this to me is a gift for my creator. For me to have been born in this, I can't thank him enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm one of the most proud to be black people, you and me. I have absolutely no issue with being with my own, around my own. I grew up in New Orleans, but all we have is our own. It's how, it's how I spent my whole uh, uh, more um, developmental stages growing up. I was around nothing but us, and I was very, very good with it. I loved it, didn't think nothing of it. Everywhere I went, when I traveled around, it was always in black areas, you know what I'm saying? I mean, all through the East Coast, through the Midwest, I never hung out in white areas, always was where we were, you know what I'm saying? Because this is what I'm comfortable with, you know? In fact, I was passing by Cabrini Greens one time, you know, the, the Chicago project where they film good times and candy man all that stuff there right and i was passing by and i seen some brothers down there hooping you know what I'm saying the project is gone now but so that's how long ago this was i see some brothers in the, in the project hooping i had a little time between what i was doing right i parked the car got out the car went into the project and shot ball that that's kush that's kush when i was in virginia same thing they had a park in the middle of the ghetto where brothers used to be hooping they had their guns all in the grass and everything. Some dudes over there selling dope and stuff. I used to go in there and hoop. That's Brother Kush. I'm comfortable around my people. So if I'm this comfortable, if every state and city I've been in, I was in the hood with my people, chilling like I grew up there. I used to be in Chicago, man, sitting on a porch in the hood, in Zion and Waukegan. I heard they um, gentrified one of those little cities, you know, but this was back in like 89, 90. Y'all know Zion and Waukegan was all black. And they had that skating ring either in Zion or Waukegan where all the blacks hung out at. I used to be in the hood, man, chilling like I grew up there. I'm from New Orleans. Like I grew up there. Walking through Brooklyn like I grew up there. I am a hood rat. I am very comfortable around my people. So if I'm this comfortable around my own people, how is it that I have such a hard time connecting with my people? Because the one thing I don't do 
is try to kiss up to people that don't like me. 